Next to girl, I'm hot as damn fish for you because my ass done sat here and recorded a whole what felt like a 17 minute video. Then when I got up, this shit was only three minutes long because what? My dumb ass didn't check the damn memory and it was full and I'm just sitting here rambling and running my damn mouth and now I want to go somewhere and get high like steam to, to ease some of this pissed off off of me. Did y'all get into this last episode of Underground? Bitch, this was the best episode of Underground, and I'm going to tell you why, because they had a sponsor, honey. This episode of Underground is brought to you by the Betty Ford Rehabilitation Center. Yes, God, honey, man, it's late, like Betty Ford. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. Steam was on this episode doing the Harlem Shake. She was shaking and trembling. I never trembled in my life. Heard about it once or twice, but now I'm shaking, and I swear the shaking feels so nice. Yes, God, honey, she had went to Betty Ford. Steam was detoxing and going through withdrawals, and for the life of me, I ain't understand. I was like, Steam, why is you on this island doing all this shaking, honey, when you got a medicine cabinet full of dope? But then I realized she was on the 12-step program trying to get her mind together, trying to get a little peace, trying to get a little bit of clarity, trying to get a little piece of detox. Yes, God, honey. Girl, you should have just drank the skin tea like the other girls do on the Instagram, girl. Girl, I know you got all the itchy gitchy ya ya herbs out there, girl. You should have got one of them empty-ass bottles out that tree and shook it up like this and made you a potion. Yes, honey, drank that potion. But I'm going to tell you something. Soon as Steen graduated from the Betty Ford Center, she took her ass to the Marlowe Hatton School of Hoeing and signed up to be an instructor. Yes, God, Steen, you better teach that girl how to give him something he can feel. Yes, God, honey, she said, I will teach you the way Marlo Hatton taught me. How to get you an old nasty piece of old white man and how to manipulate him into doing what you want to do. I, that, I know that's right, Steen. Each one, teach one. Okay, Steen say in her sobriety, she going to do some good for the world. Baby, she got that girl hair straight. She told her what to say. Told her what lipstick to wear. Told her what to, what perfume to spray on her punani. Her, her girl, don't put the white diamonds down there. Put the Chanel. We don't put, I put the Chanel, I put the bar number nine. We, he don't, the, the, they don't, uh uh. White diamonds remind them of their mamas at the fundraising gap. They don't want, they don't want it smelling like white diamonds. They want it smelling like Chanel. Or, and whatever you do, they don't want it smelling like barn and beach. Okay? Chanel or bar number nine on the Punani. Did she say, no girl, you go down there and, and you cook for the man? Okay? You cook for him, okay? Then you hand it over to him in a basket, but you don't hand over everything you got in the platter. You come back and you bring that in the dessert dish, honey. After his whiskey. Come on, Steve. Now, see, bitch, you had to talk me a few things. Because, see, I be going to dinner with the man and be trying to fuck in the bathroom. Okay, I didn't realize I got to... I got to let the man go home, let him get drink some more, think about the day. Then I got to come back right his house and knock on the door and pretend like I left something over there. Then I give it to him. See, see, Steen, thanks to Steen and the Marlo Hampton School of Hoenn, bitch, I might fuck around and be engaged by Christmas. And I'm excited. Y'all, why well, I won't let that lady be great? Because I'm petty. Anyway, y'all, this episode of Underground by far was the best episode this season. And I'll be the first person to tell y'all. Y'all already know, I am not the fan, a fan of these 900 storylines going on at one time. It honestly feels like an episode of Love and Hip Hop. But I will say this, for whatever reason, in this episode, they all came together seamlessly. It worked. I was able to keep up. They were not all over the place. That alone, the fact that they were able to intertwine 19 different storylines at the same damn time within 43 minutes, and the audience not get lost, that's skill, baby. Y'all did that. I don't even know where to begin with the review. Steam, uh, Steam with the Betty Ford. The girl who we got on that. Let's talk about Georgia. Georgia! Georgia! 
Y'all said Georgia was passing. I ain't want to believe it. I guess I was just naive and just thought they cast her wife. I mean, she did look a little Peter Rican to me. You know what I'm saying? But I just, I was just like, well, shit. If they gonna make us think she white, and you know what? I guess that is how it works in the real world. You kind of look at her like a confused dog, but you're like, shit, she acting like she white and she carry her on like she white. So for her to be that bold with it, uh, she got to be white because shit. So we come to find out the bitch wasn't. And that is why, let me sit still stop fidgeting like a child. That is why um, she got nervous on that podium last episode and got Elizabeth hit in the head. With that bottle. Because she thought that people was going to clock her tea. She thought they was going to clock her tea. Okay. And Elizabeth went and found the papers and clocked her what? Her tea. But Georgia, that's my thing with you, girl. If your ass passing, then you would think you would be a general member and not in charge of the girls. Is Georgia in charge of the girls? She in charge. Is Georgia in charge of the girls? She is in charge of the girls. Georgia, you would think that your ass would sit down and what? Lay low. You need to be a general member. <laughs> you can't be a president of the girls and quiet as it's kept. You ain't even really one of the girls, okay? You white like this, not like this, okay? Like this, not like this. Lord Georgia, Georgia say bitch. But I'm gonna tell y'all one thing. Georgia bitch, Georgia, she say she the realest bitch. I'm on real of their reality, fuck the dumb shit. It take nothing to a casualty. FBI be after me, quarter key and my woman Lee coming back from St. Croix. First lady to Pastor Troy. Even I'm a Georgia boy, cause war, I'm ready. J Why do I remember that hood ass Pastor Troy rap realist bitch? But Georgia the realist bitch, cause she did like me when I went to jail. Bitch, I ain't got no warrants, no tea. Girl, go get my wallet. I'll be out in an hour. Soon as they took Georgia down, bitch, it was a knock at the door. Knock, knock, knock. Georgia was getting off the um the carriage, bitch, because she what? In charge of the girls. And she got her paperwork together. Yes, God, honey. Georgia, I ain't mad with you, but Georgia ass nervous. Now, she leaving, leaving on that midnight train to Georgia. Okay. My world. Here's Georgia say, bitch, we got to get the car going, get the fuck out of Dodge. Moving right along, because you know we got 50, 11 storylines to cover. Kato in that sandpaper ass face of his. Let me tell you something. Woo! He boils my blood. You would think, first of all, Kato, you ain't even free for real. Okay, your ass is out here. Bitch, you ain't got the first piece of piece of green card. You out on some forged freedom papers. Okay, bitch, if you fuck around and get pulled over and stopped and frisked in that carriage, they is carrying your ass to INS. Then they taking your ass to Guantanamo Bay until your ass to be extradited back to Macon. So you would think your ass will what? Lay low. You need to lay low and stop poking fun at these damn white people because your ass Will not, well, shit, I, yeah, I was going to say, you ain't going to be in charge of the girls for too much longer. But the tech, the stabler, and that dyke-ass slave catcher, uh, they look like she got all that hair on her coochie. Uh, they showed your ass who's the boss, okay? Like Diana said, love taught me who was, who was, who was the boss. Apparently not you. You ain't in charge of the girls. Dyke Lady Slave Catcher, is you in charge of the girls? Y'all already know the rest. Listen, Kato, I love the fact that he donating the money to the cause, but how you can't sit up in white folks' face, talk about them any kind of way, talk about how they ain't got money, be all cocky and stuff with it. You being cocky, I'm talking to these people trying to, yeah, you, first of all, that white lady supposed to be the baddest bitch. But y'all saw when Kato yelled at her, that bitch got scared as hell. Honey, she didn't pull that gun out of defense. She pulled that gun out of fear. Mama was scared as hell, okay? Looking like one of the golden girls trying to pull a girl. Girl, if she could <laughs> I'm falling and I can't get up. If that bitch could have pushed life alert at the time, he yelled, get out of my house, she would have. Because she was on the verge of stroking out. <laughs> and Kato don't fuck the right and got all them people killed. And um, I want Detective Stabler to step back over 
to the good side. Okay, because he, you know, when the show started, he had something. But you know what? Since Rosalie don't kill that man's son, it ain't no hope. See, them light-skinned slaves don't fucked it up for everybody. Here it is, Cato fucking all over the church's money. And Rosalie just messing up everybody's emotions. And speaking of, emotions make you cry sometimes. All right, all right, all right. That scene when um, Noah walked in that room and saw Rosalie and that song started playing, whatever was in the background, that was a very touching scene. And I love the fact that they did not sexualize the scene. First of all, we didn't want to see no damn um, uh, pregnancy porn, number one. But I just loved how demure and how vulnerable Noah's character was. And let's not forget how that melanin, that melanin was popping, okay? That melanin was popping, okay? One time for the brothers is clean shaven. I'm so glad my beard coming back in and I ain't looking like no big sixth grader no more. But I love that they did not overly sexualize that scene. What I will say is Rosalie need to sit her ass down, her 13 month pregnant ass down and had this goddamn baby before they try to enter back into damn freedom. James is 7 to 10 years old and your mama got to be somewhere in the range of 36 to 40, okay? They ass been slave this long, another 60 days, another 90 days, another 360 days. It's not going to swing the boat left or right. Have that baby. Get your mind, body, and soul right and go get them next Christmas. And Noah, learn to say no. Like, damn, like, Shit, women been fucking men up hell since the damn slavery. Like, tell her no. Let you enjoy the damn um the the, the freedom app for a little bit before you go right or better yet, uh, she ain't trained long enough. Okay, you know what? You should have told her well, I need to meet Moses and then I need some training too because quiet as it's kept is because of Rosalie. Anarchy and all hell broke loose and they had to take off running early anyway if you really want to know the truth about it, okay? And speaking of training, honey, <clears throat> Steen don't taught me a couple things. Listen, fucking around with Steen and the model I had in the school of home, my ass might fuck around and be engaged by Christmas. Because Steen told the girl, honey, you want to get the man, the good man, the good white man. You got to cook for the man. Okay, and then when you take it to him, baby, you serve it to him in a basket, but you don't give it all to him on a platter. See, that's where I went wrong, because I be going out with the men, and I be trying to be freaky deaky, trying to be the fun girl, and bitch, I fuck him in the red lobster, so I fuck him in the car. You know, I play around in the car, because I thought that's what the, I th they said the men want the fun girl, but I realized, uh-uh, honey, you can't give it all to him on a platter at one time. You got to wait till he have his nightly whiskey, then you got to go back and serve it to him on the dessert dish. So what I gather from that is, I go, I play coy and lady at the Red Lobster. I let him drop me off and kiss me on the cheek, okay? Kiss me on the cheek. And then, when he go have his nightly whiskey, I pop up at his house and knock on the door and pretend like I left something over there. And then that's when I serve it to him on the dessert dish. Yes, God, honey, you better come and get some of this punani pudding. Yes, God, honey. Thank you, Marlo Hansen. And moreover, thank you, Steve, for being an awesome instructor. You did that. Girl, ooh, I'm excited about my, honey, my newfound love life. I knew I was doing something wrong. Listen, y'all, don't go around and be a no hoe all your life or be a calculated hoe, okay? And girl, like, you ain't got to. See, I was just giving him something he could feel real quick. All I got to do is just stretch it out a couple hours. If somebody would have told me this shit a long time ago, bitch, Bitch, I could have been on my way somewhere, you know, sipping margaritas in Cabo with my man. Okay, yes. Listen, speaking back to Rosalie, one thing that get on my nerve, you ain't even sent no email, no pigeon, no messenger bird, no fax, no telegram, no whisper, no nothing, even a prayer to find out if your mama was still in making. And girl, y'all about to go down there and take a blank trip because... James ain't living a bad life. Miss uh, so-and-so says she's going to make sure he lived a good life. And your mama ain't even part of the inventory, okay? Take some inventory of your woman and your glory. Leave the best thing behind. Yes, honey, that's that a little bit of Aretha Franklin from the Sparkle soundtrack. 
She ain't even contacted the Aretha Franklin of the plantation to find out if Steen was even still part of the inventory. Steen ain't even there. So y'all finna get ready. I mean, I guess y'all would have had to go to make it anyway to get James and Steen. You would have had to go anyway. But, girl, now we got to go, girl, this like when you, you agreed to pick up one friend, then when you pick that friend up, she'll be like, oh, you'll pick my home girl, Keisha, up. She real cool. Where she stay? On 35th Street. Bitch, we on 1st. And I lived on 15th. So I don't drove down this way from 15th to 1st. Now I got to double back past 15th and go up to 35th to get her. Uh, oh, girl, you pulling it. You trying it. I hope your friend got gas money. I hope your friend buying the first round of drinks. Matter of fact, I hope your friend putting in gas and buying the first round of drinks. And I got to take this bitch home, too. That's really what that feel like. We here in free. We got to go down to Macon, get down there, find out Christina. Then we got to double back and then go through some uncharted territories that we do not even know what the fuck going on. Because from what I gather thus far, Moses ain't taught her nothing about getting to Carolina and swimming in the beaches. And y'all, I know, I know, I was holding out for this last little piece. John Legend playing Frederick Douglass. I'm going to tell you something. When I found out John Legend was playing Frederick Douglass, I had all kinds of shit to talk. I was like, see, he finna fuck up. Here he go with this old Tyler Perry shit interjecting himself in the damn movie. This old narcissistic shit. Gotta put your mark on it. And I just figured because Frederick Douglass is such a big part of black history and slavery so on and so forth, that the role was going to be large. I must say, James, I mean James, John Legend did a really good job in a small amount of time. And he did just enough, just a little sprinkle, okay? Just a little sprinkle. We don't need no whole lot. We don't need you integrated all throughout the episode. If you want to pop back in and do a little yang, yang, yang around the house, we here for it. But don't, don't give us no more than what you gave us, John. Don't fuck it up. You did good with the music. Thank you for pulling the, the people together to produce it. But now y'all know the gag really going to be a Christy Teague and then show up in this. Then, then, then I'm flushing underground down the toilet. I promise you I am. But girl, I, I, I mean, it's hell. Quiet as it's kept, John Legend. I mean, real talk. You like Georgia. You ain't black like this. You black like this, okay? Not like this, but like this, okay? We talking about Brian here playing French Douglas. Baby, they bronze you down, okay? BB cream you down, okay? Got that. Sean, you ain't never had nappy in your damn life. Old light skinned half of. Y'all, this was an excellent episode of Underground, and I would like to thank. Um, our, our two sponsors for making it real, the Betty Ford Center, y'all, addiction is real, and the model had the school of home, and without y'all, this episode definitely would not have been what it was. Oh, shit, bitch. We can't forget about Elizabeth, honey. We can't go out here because she's strong. Let me tell you something. Instead of having Kendall Jenner in that motherfucking Pepsi commercial, Elizabeth is who should have been in the damn commercial, okay? Because Elizabeth, she stopped the patrols. She said, bitch, if you going to do it, do it to it. She said, brand me, bitch. Because she said, I'm tired of him. I am a nigger lover. Okay, go off, Elizabeth. Go in and let her. Okay, underground, underground, underground. Woo, yes, Lord. I'm here for it. My throat hurt because I don't have to do this video twice. But I'm glad it happened because I think the second pass came out better. The 900 storylines, I talked shit about it, but y'all was able to weave them all together seamlessly, and it worked. Like the church folks say, I ain't gonna hold you, so I'm gonna let y'all go. Talk to you later. Bye.